In this video, we look at how to estimate armor models using Oxmetrix. So we have a data set here, consumption data, that's the one we use in the lectures as well. So we want to reproduce the results on slides 32 and 33. So we are interested in the variables for dark consumption, log income. We can make a graph of those with the graphics. There we simply select C and Y, that is the log of consumption and the log of income. We plot, click Add Actual Series, and we get the following. Now, for this uh, model, we are interested in the log consumption income ratio. So to construct that variable, we click Model, Algebra, and we then define a new variable called C underscore Y, which is just C minus Y. Remember in the algebra editor to finish each sentence with a semicolon like this. We click a run, we can go to our data set, go to the end, and we can see that there we have our new variable. Now we can make a plot, we can go to model, click graphics, or we can simply press LG on a PC computer. We deselect the variables from before and select the new variable that we have just constructed. Click on actual series, and there we get the time series plot for the log consumption income ratio. We note from the graph that this appears to be fairly stationary. And the next thing we could do is look at the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So go back to the graphics menu. We still select the variable t underscore y, but now we click all plot types. Here we have various options, but we want to go to the time series properties. We want to click on the autocorrelation function and we click plot. And there it goes in the background. We also want to plot the partial autocorrelation function. So we click that, we then deselect the autocorrelation function. Note that you can set the last length here. So if you want more than 20 lengths, you can easily do that here. I click plot and that gives me the following in the background. I will close this window. And here we have the four graphs that are so shown on slide 32. So we want to estimate an armor model for this variable C underscore Y. And to do that, we click on model here. We want to select the PC GIF module. We select the category models for time series data. And then we select the class of female models using PC GIF. Then we click the formulate button. And that gives us the usual formulate window. So here we need to specify the variables. And here we include first C underscore Y. Note that this has been set as our y variable, our dependent variable, and then uh, automatically we get a constant added. Now, we don't want to add any lags here because in the next window, here we have the armor settings. We can select the AR order and the MA order. And we want to start with an armor 2, 2 model. Then the fractional parameter D, we fix at zero. Treatment of the mean, we can choose none because we just want to use the constant as a regressor. We click OK, and here we have to specify the estimation sample. Then we select maximum likelihood as the estimator, and we click OK. So this is the output we get. And we can see here that we have the estimated AR coefficients, AR1 and AR2. So this is uh, theta1 hat and theta2 hat in terms of how we write it in the lecture notes and the slides. We get the estimated standard errors and t values as always. Below we have the MA coefficients. So this is our alpha 1 and alpha 2. Finally, we have our constant term. Note that this is equal to the first column on slide 33. We get the value of the log likelihood here. We have the number of observations, 130. We have the number of estimated parameters, 6. So that's the five coefficients we see up here. And in addition to that, it's the estimated residual variance given by sigma squared as reported down here. Then we get the AIC information criteria, minus 4.5. And we get the mean, the variable, as well as the variance of the variable. At the very bottom, we have some uh, details about the numerical optimization. This was based on the BFGS algorithm. We have achieved strong convergence using these convergence criteria and the starting values below. So in addition to the output we get here, we can always go to our model and then go to test or simply click LT. We can do a graphic analysis of the residuals. 
So here we have, we select the actual and the fitted, the first one. We select the residuals, the scale ones, the residual density and histogram, and finally the residual autocorrelation. So we can use these to see how well specified it is, and just note that this seems like a fairly good model. Back to the results. In addition to that, we can always go to back to our test uh, model, and we can get our test summary. So that gives us a few of the standard uh, tests, normality, arch, and autocorrelation. And based on this model, we want to impose restrictions. For example, consider the restriction of going from an armor 2 to an armor 1 0, so that corresponds to an AR1 model. And if we do that, we can just estimate it for back to PDF formulate, same variables as before, but now we just set the AR order to 1, the MA order to 0. So like this, same sample as before, estimate by maximum likelihood, and we get the following up. We have now imposed three restrictions, alpha 1, alpha 2, and theta 2 are all set to 0. We have estimated the model, and now of course we have the likelihood, the value of the log likelihood in both these models, so we can easily do a likelihood rate to test. But PZGIF has a very nice feature. If we go back to our model here, we can use the progress button here, and it's going to give us the following. Here, model one, the first one, we estimated 130 observations. We have six estimated parameters. And here is a nice summary of the log likelihood. There we get the three information criteria up here, and we have the same for the second model. Now, here we have the likelihoods. We can use those to do an LR test, or we can use the information criteria out here to select the model that we prefer. But just note that in this case, we have indicated here which model is preferred based on each of the individual information criteria, and note that they give us different results here. Then at the bottom, we have a test of model redu uh, reduction. And here it says that we have to make sure that the models are indeed nested. So that's not something PCGIF can do for us. We have to make sure that's the case on our own. So here we get the test of going from a FEMA 1 model, that was the ARMA 2.2 model, to a FEMA 2 model, which was our AR1 model. So this is the likelihood ratio test that we get here. So in this case, we have high square distribution of the test statistics under the null. We have imposed three restrictions, so three degrees of freedom. We get a test which is just minus two, the difference in the likelihoods. And finally, we get the p-value. Well, a final thing we could do is to make forecasts based on the model that we have just estimated. To do that, we again go back to the test uh, window. Note that PCGIF now still has the latest model uh, saved. So this is the model we are still working with. We can select forecast here. Number of forecast, I'm just going to set that to 20. I'm going to choose not only the naive forecast. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to choose the error fans rather than bars. And then the critical value to use. Uh, for the error pass is just 2. So that's going to mean that the um, best that we will get out of this is plus minus 2 times the standard deviation. Number of pre-forecast observations to graph, let's just set that to 10 and note that here if you want to write it, you can select this option. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to do a graph, which looks like this. So here we have the red line is the actually observed variable. And then the blue line is our point forecast, and these error fans, the approximate confidence and so on. So that's it. This is how we estimate the ARMA models using PCGIF. Thanks for watching.